Well, it was something that I made in uh, 2001, 2002, after the event of the Twin Towers being bombed in, in New York. My elder daughter and I had just picked up uh, my younger daughter from Heathrow to hear on the radio as we were driving that there had been an incident in, in New York. So we went straight into the house, turned on the television in time to see the second plane go into the second tower. And we just watched this in, in horror. And we were just dumbstruck because you know, it was like watching a film. It wasn't real. It, nothing could be as bad as that. With, what, what is it about? And then it gradually dawned on us that this was actually happening. This was real. And we were seeing it happening in real time. And we just stood there, cases, bags around us. And I thought, Ra Rachel was the last was on the, one of the last planes out of New York. And we just got home. And then as we were watching, one of the reporters was speaking to this man called Howard Lutnick, who happened to be the CEO of a firm called Cantor Fitzgerald. And he had the top floors of one of the, the towers. And he didn't go to work that day because he took his son to play school for the first time. And this man was sitting there in absolute despair and this ridiculous report, and I got so cross, was trying to ask him how he felt. And all this man could say was, I should have been there, but 700, I've got 700 people, I've got 700. And I thought, I, I can't do anything. Somebody needs to do something, and I can't do anything. So obviously we were glad that Rachel was home and we watched the news like everybody else did. And it was just going through my mind and I thought, I could make a quilt. So, got the pen and paper out and thoughts were whizzing through my mind and I again didn't quite know what to do. And gradually this sort of thing took shape. And so I knew that I wanted to do something to show this, the, this, the, the um, swirling clouds of, of dust and things. But what really was going through my mind was those people in those towers went to work that morning and by about half past nine when it happened, they would have been there for a couple of hours because they always start early. They would have been going about their business, doing whatever, and then all of a sudden, gone. And I thought, that there are so many people involved. And I just had this vision in my mind of all these souls, whoever they were, whatever religion they were, they were any religion or none, were just being, poof, there they were gone. And so I could see not flames rising from this because there wasn't much in the way of fire in flames, but I could see souls rising. And so when I came to construct what was whistling through in my brain, I could see the dust and I could see what looks like flames, but in fact, they are the souls of the people going to wherever. And of course, New York is always known as the Big Apple. So, so it's torn the heart out of Manhattan, hence the red heart, and those are the bits that they're taking up with them. And I quilted in gold just an apple. When it came, I, I could get the drawing, I, I had the ideas, but of course then it came to finding the fabric. And I belonged to a quilting group and talked to, talked to the girls, and they were brilliant. They came along with bits of fabric and said, is this any good? Would this work? How could you use this? And so I managed to get the bits with the shimmery bits, the smoky bits. They were just incredible. I couldn't find the blue. I looked everywhere to find the right blue. And then one day I picked up the newspaper again and looked at it. Went to my stash, as we all have. And I had this all the time. I'd had it years. And, so, and it was the perfect blue. I bought some of this fabric in the States when we'd been there a few years before. And that was, somebody gave me other, another blue, and I just felt that this was the Atlantic Ocean that washes Manhattan, the Bay of Manhattan, and our coast as well. And that was just taking my thoughts and, and really my, my wishes and, and, and hugs, I just wanted to hug this man across the Atlantic Ocean to Manhattan. Of course, by now the towers had gone. There was nothing left of them. They were away. 
but they had to be there because that's what it was all about. So I decided that having just quilted swirls, if I quilted, if I stitched the towers in just stitching and then I whipped it with some silver thread, the outline is there. The bricks and mortar have gone, but the towers are still there in my quilt. <laughs> 